Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 26th lecture. We were discussing about the Kepler's equation for uh, hyperbolic orbit, and in that context, we derived uh, one equation. Uh, we worked out till this point okay. h square equal to 2 mu r, h square equal to 2 mu r minus mu r square divided by a. and uh, minus r r dot ok and the uh, so this part we are going to replace here this part we are going to replace uh, this we have uh, a times this is mu times l equal to mu times 1 minus e a square a to mu r equal to now the value for the r we insert here the r is given to 1 minus e cos hyperbolic f Okay, we write it this way. One more step we need here. Break the bracket here. Minus mu a plus two. mu a e times cos hyperbolic f minus mu a e a square cos hyperbolic a square f minus r r dot a square. Now, whatever the terms can be cancelled out, we will cancel it. So, this term and this term this cancels out and you can see that this part this part and this part together it will cancel out so this implies and thereafter we take this part to the left or maybe we can take it to the right hand side and this part we can bring to the left hand side. So, this becomes r r dot square equal to mu a e a square. So, th this will cancel out this together this will cancel out. So, mu a mu a e a square minus mu a e a square cos hyperbolic f
this is rr dot okay. and okay. so if we take the, the square root And what this quantity is? This quantity we have to write it here. This see the cos hyperbolic f minus sin hyperbolic square f. This equal to one. So one minus cos hyperbolic square f equal to minus sin hyperbolic square f. So this quantity here is mu a e a square sin hyperbolic square f and with a minus sign. Okay, now look on to both the sides. This is minus a, we will write it separately mu e a square sin hyperbolic square f. Okay, thereafter it is a straight forward to work out this problem. Now, we need to insert here the value for the r and r dot and the problem will get solved out. We will have to move to the next page. So, r we have uh, written as a times 1 minus e cos hyperbolic f and r dot we have written as uh, minus a times e sin hyperbolic f times f dot. This is r times r dot. So, this a square this quantity equal to minus a times mu e a square sin hyperbolic mu e a square sin hyperbolic a square f. Take the square root. So, this gets reduced to minus a square e times 1 minus e cos hyperbolic f times sin hyperbolic f times f dot this equal to minus a under root mu also let us take it side e sin hyperbolic f we have taken the square root.
and also we can put a plus minus sign here because we are taking a square root so plus minus sign we can insert here in this place so what we can see here if sin hyperbolic f this quantity is non zero so we can cancel out from both the sides and therefore we'll get here 1 minus e cos hyperbolic f times f dot minus plus mu by a cube under root with minus sign okay. and e cancels out this is what we are getting here let us verify all the signs here whatever we have done see if we got till this point and from here we have started this part we have written mu times a 1 minus a square and on the right hand side we have expanded it minus mu this square minus r r dot square and then we further expand it so this is minus mu a minus mu square minus r dot this is fine then we have taken it on the right hand side we have written it this way r r dot we have taken it on the left hand side So, from there this part again we have put uh, inserted r and r dot here and then taking the square root. So, for that plus minus sign we have introduced here left hand side we have this way minus a square e then we simplified it further by cancelling out e and we got this format. Now, from this place we can see that this quantity is minus e cos hyperbolic f minus mu by a cube to the power 1 by 2 d t and if we integrate it between 0 to e or we can integrate from e 0 to e that is all the same. So, instead of writing here e we write capital F. So, this becomes F minus e now this will become sin hyperbolic f. This quantity we write as n, the whole thing we are writing as m t minus t.
So, this is the mean angular rate in the case of hyperbolic orbit. So, we ignore the negative sign here and write it as So, this is our final uh, Kepler's equation for hyperbolic orbit. So, uh, this was the equation we were looking for and remember the in the n equation what we are getting here minus a q under root. So, here a is less than 0 and therefore, the quantity under the square root sign is always positive and this will be greater than 0. So, minus a q this is greater than 0 and mu is also greater than 0. So, there is no inconsistency in the result and obviously, in the result where we have written t minus t times n equal to m h e psi hyperbolic f minus f. So, you can see that this is this is eccentricity okay. and here this is your uh, base this is not eccentricity. So, e to the power f minus e to the power minus f divided by 2 this eccentricity and this is different they, these are not the same it, it should not be confused with. where the cos hyperbolic f we have written as e to the power f plus e to the power minus f divided by 2. Okay, so, we have covered this part and uh, it is a geometrical interpretation also can be looked into, but before that we will just go through mathematics and let us look the other way. Okay. So, for hyperbola the equation in terms of x y with the origin at the center is written as And then we can, if we put here x equal to a or uh, x equal to a cos hyperbolic um, say uh, theta or uh, cos hyperbolic, let us say uh, cos hyperbolic f itself and y equal to b sin hyperbolic f and insert into this. So, we get a 
cos hyperbolic square f divided by a square minus b a square sin hyperbolic square f divided by b a square this equal to 1. So, we can see that this is satisfied this is the identity which we are getting which is true. Hence, for the hyperbola the equation once written in this form this is satisfied by x equal to a cos hyperbolic f and y equal to b sin hyperbolic f. And this can be utilized for solving the problem. Now, we look into this hyperbola. So, your center is located here which is the your origin. Okay. These are the focus one may be occupied focus another may be the vacant focus. So, let us say this is the occupied focus f and here we have f star. So, this distance from this place to this place, this is B and this is A. Okay. And property of hyperbola is that if we take any point say P on this hyperbola, so P f magnitude minus P f star magnitude this will be equal to 2 a this quantity is fixed. And also we have uh, say we, if we write this point as A and this point we write as B. So, we will have F A equal to F A star B because these are the perigee position one is occupied focus another one this is the vacant focus and this is the occupied focus. This is vacant or non occupied. Okay, therefore, if your P coincides with B, B then if B minus F star B, this should also be equal to 2 A. Now, if we look from this place, if a star b is nothing but f a. So, this becomes f b minus f a mod equal to 2 a or f b minus f a. If you look into this equation, so this is nothing but this distance from here to here. So, this distance is your 2 a magnitude wise. And uh, if we draw a asymptote here like this, if we draw a asymptote like this, so the point where from the perigee if you drop a uh, vertical uh, or uh, draw a straight line uh, perpendicular line up, so the point where it cuts, okay. so stop there the where it is cutting the asymptote. I will show it in the next page. So, distance from this point to this point this is your B. So, I will show it on the next page. So, we are drawing an asymptote 
say here it's a going here in this direction so we need to draw an asymptote an asymptote will pass through the center so this is asymptote of the hyperbola similarly here on this side asymptote can be drawn this angle we so as beta now if we draw a line perpendicular to this and wherever it cuts up so this red one is b and magnitude by distance from this place to this place this is your a on the right hand side you have another part of the hyperbola which we have not shown here we can complete it maybe so this distance also this is a this is not to the scale uh, not a very good figure but it's okay in this direction x and the y and origin lies here in 0 0 and therefore for this we have written x square by a square minus y square by b square this equal to 1 the, as the equation of the hyperbola. So, we will discuss about the uh, hyperbolic eccentric anomaly uh, later on. First, we look here into this part. So, we have uh, y equal to r sin theta divided uh, uh, y equal to r sin theta that means we have any point here taken this angle is theta and this is r so this will become y similarly on the right hand side we can show okay, suppose the focus is here if this is your focus and this is r and you are showing angle this as theta so y equal to r sin theta it can be written so y equal to r sin theta okay. this angle we show it as the turn angle delta this is the turn angle a line parallel to this asymptote so this angle will be shown here by this particular one and this is theta infinity we write as so this is the asymptote angle from here to here this is your delta this is the turn angle you can look into any standard book about the hyperbola so r equal to l times l divided by 1 plus e cos theta sin theta so this is another way of working here say if i write here a times c a square minus 1 So, what we are assuming here that a is greater than 0, where we are taking the positive value. Equally, we could have written here minus a times 1 minus c a square or l equal to a times 1 minus e a square, we could have written in that case a will be less than 0. So, these are the ways you will find in different books, they have their own ways of describing uh, different authors they work in different ways so i am introducing both the ways of working out the problem okay and also we will prove that b equal to a times e a square minus 1 under root a times under root e a square minus 1. So, this is uh, 
a simple result which can be uh, derived later on for the time being we just take it for granted. Now, we have sin hyperbolic f equal to already we have looked into here in this equation y by b. Okay, so, from here this is y by b and if we insert this, so this becomes from this place y equal to r sin theta equal to this quantity. So, we insert it here e square minus 1 sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. And then we have b here in this place. So, for this b also we introduce the quantity which is a times e a square minus 1. And if we simplify this, so this gets red, reduced to e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. So, this gives you the result sin hyperbolic f this is e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. This is for hyperbolic orbit you are getting the result. And if you use this equation cos hyperbolic f equal to 1 plus here cos hyperbolic f minus sin hyperbolic f sin square hyperbolic f this equal to 1. So, from this place cos hyperbolic f can be obtained. So, this becomes 1 plus sin hyperbolic a square f a square root okay. and if you insert this here in this place okay, this value. So, this will get reduced to this step I am skipping you can check it yourself e cos theta plus 1 plus e cos theta. So, these are some of the standard results which are used in solving the problems and both way the things can be worked out either whatever uh, see uh, using uh, the method worked here we have done okay, this particular part this also can be used or either we can utilize the way we are working here okay. to solve the uh, Kepler's problem. So, we have got sin hyperbolic f equal to e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. and let us write this quantity. Now, it is a property of the hyperbolic function. This will be equal to and these are given in a standard textbook. Where Okay, and if we insert all these things, so your z plus z square 
plus 1 under root this quantity once you insert the value here e square minus 1 under root sin theta and this can be simplified. So, this step you can carry out I will skip this step here. So, z plus z square plus 1 under root this gets reduced to sin theta cos theta plus e divided by 1 plus e cos theta okay. and we need to further work on this uh, to complete it. So, from there if we complete it, so we will get for the expression for the f which we are going to uh, do it in the next lecture and then we will put it into the hyperbolic uh, for the hyperbolic orbit the equation we have derived and from there we will see that this is exactly the same as the equation we have derived here in this place except for the sign change ok means the here instead of minus it will be plus and here instead of plus it will be minus. So, we will do it in the next class thank you very much.